I think it's about time to put the elements in through the holes. I left this until the last possible moment because I didn't want to risk damaging any of the elements during the furnace construction. This is a braided aluminum wire that's rated at 100 amps, and I chose the 100 amp option even though this furnace is only going to draw about 50 amps because I want everything a little bit overbuilt. With these resistive loads like this I would rather be on the heavy side. So these ones are punched at the ends here for connection and these ones are just straight jumpers that go from one element to the next. And these stainless spring clips are the device that holds the strap onto the element. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to connect up the three jumpers on the right hand side of the furnace. So I'm going to start by spreading this braid nice and wide so that it is at least as wide as the flame sprayed aluminum on the end of the rod. So now, finally, I can mount the box. So I've got the bolt, and a lock washer, and a washer, and a nut. And I've tightened that down very well. And then I put a washer, and I put the strap and the lug together. It's important that for the the best electrical connection that the most surface area is covered here between the two components. So I put the strap next to the lug and then a bolt on the other end. Now I've mounted the connection block on the left hand side of the electrical box and I've run the strap from the lug over to the element nearest the back of the furnace. And I put the hour meter on the top right and directly below the temperature control I'll put the switch and the indicator light that indicates that power is on to the uh, to the control unit and below the hour meter I'll put the indicator that indicates that there's power going to the elements and down in the bottom I'll put the fuse so these controllers have a, a little plastic clip on the back for mounting, so I'll use it as a template for cutting the square hole that I need. So I've run my red wire and my black wire through the bushings in the back of the box, and I've pre-bent them to fit into the lugs. It's very important that the wire doesn't put any pressure on the lug that it sits in there nicely. Now I've stripped and prepared the end of the power cable, but before I run it up into the box, I'm going to have to bend it so that I can strap it to the furnace right about here. Okay, back to the control box now, where I've run the cable up into the box. I've put a plastic bushing over the end of the connector, and I've run the ground into the ground lug. So I've mounted the door switch now, 
and there's the tab that presses down on the switch. I've put a flexible conduit connector in the housing of the door switch and I've run a piece of 3 8 inch flexible conduit out of the connector. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mount this onto the electrical box, but I'm going to mount it in such a way that I can work on the wiring. So I'll mount it in the open position. Okay, so here's my yellow jumper between the relay in the temperature controller and the other side of the coil in the control relay. And I've got a set of yellow jumpers that run between the coil and the power relay and the indicator light and the hour meter. So I put a bit of a flying splice in here to join those together. There they are, the red and the black. I've tidied this up with some cable lacing, so I'll check my connections and close up the panel. Okay, the furnace is officially finished.